Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Wednesday, April 5th, 2017, and this is just a, a quick market wrap. We had uh, an interesting day in the market. I want to just start out by saying we don't really have any very significant technical events. Uh, for those of you that were, you know, had the uh, have the luxury or ability to to watch the charts throughout the day, you probably noticed some interesting price action. Uh, we started the day with, um, and I'm going to look at IWM here. This is uh, just because we had the biggest turnaround of all the major indices that I follow. IWM popped up in the morning, an impressive gain of about 1.15 percent or so. Um, so pretty strong day early on, only to have it turn around at that point, come back in, backfill the gap, and then some tried to go positive again. I should clarify this yellow line here, the da dashed line, that just shows you yesterday's open. I'm sorry, yesterday's close. So there's the opening gap, the big gap in prices there. And again, about a 1.14 move, 1.14% or so move. Um... Actually, it's interesting because now I measured out, what was it, 1.13 I had it at a sec. Yeah, 1.13, exactly, and that's exactly how much we closed down. So that's interesting, a 2.26 round trip turn in the small caps. That's a pretty big day. That's some pretty bearish act. That's called fading the gap and then some, or selling into strength. If that's a, that's a change of character in the market, at least from last week. You know, last week... You know, looked all along like nothing more than a counter trend rally. And if this continues, if we follow through to this, the downside uh, that you know, obviously strengthens the case that we last week was nothing more than just a counter trend rally and a new correction or, or you know, drop in the market. And you know, closer we get to those lows from the uh, the 27th, Monday before last, uh, the more nervous the, the longs are going to get. You're going to have dip buyers who bought that dip they're going to go negative if this continues another day or two of this and so it's just worth noting i just wanted to point out these one minute charts for again for you guys that come home because if you look at the headlines or you check the you know your your watch list you're going to see the spy was down 0.03 and so again i do want to say that is as great as it is if you're short to see you know see your short positions go from you know pretty good in the red this morning with the spy was up about what 0.8 percent eight tenths of a percent to turn around and then close down 0.3 that's a you know 1.1 percent round trip on the spy uh, fading all the gains and then some uh, it, 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 you know you have to remember that in the bigger picture uh, it's noise. However, I'm going to get to the charts in a second. If you watched my video earlier today, I pointed out some bearish rising wedge patterns on the on the 30-minute uh, charts. We were still well within those, and we smashed through those. These were breakdowns, impulsive breakdowns of those wedges. So that's that. Show you in the cues real quick. The same story. Cues didn't gap up as strong as the small caps, but again, if we take uh, from where we closed yesterday, in fact, they they actually had strength throughout the day unlike the spy and the iwm that, that started fading their gains early on um the queues were up about three quarters of percent there going you know heading into the last almost the last two hours of trading and then uh like with everything else had a turnaround and and fell gave up all of the gains and then some to drop uh, about 1.3 percent to close the day down uh 0.41 so a pretty interesting day again if you were uh, you're watching the markets Okay, in today's earlier video, this is the 30-minute chart that I covered on the queues. I pointed out, um, you know, pretty simple but effective. You have trying, you have a series of divergent highs. You had a divergent high here and another uh, consecutive divergent high. So this all formed one bearish rising wedge. You had an impulsive breakdown. Uh, that correction went all the way down here, terminated with a divergent low, which is bullish. Uh, that was the catalyst for that rally there. And and as I pointed out today, now we hadn't had that divergence confirmed. So this is why I'm doing this video, since there have been some, you know, tech, technical developments worth noting. I said at that during that video, we hadn't had a crossover yet, but it appeared to me that the MACD was starting to curl, roll over, and it did. And it did so before taking out these previous reaction highs. Therefore, this negative divergence is confirmed. 
We never took out these previous highs. We about matched them on the uh, RSI, but we didn't take them out. So that's negative divergence as well, since the uh, indicators are did not make new highs. They're made equal or lower highs, why prices make higher highs. And then uh, this histogram I use on the 30-minute chart uh, time frame of 2666. Um, it's not a MACD. It's an EMA pair, so forget that. I need to change the title. So that's that. There it is. We had a uh, we moved down. We had an impulsive breakdown. Impulsive selling smashed right through that wedge. Um, that was also significant for another reason. Um, I didn't point that out in the earlier video, or maybe I did. I can't recall. But you can see these reactions here. So what we have here are we have a couple of failed breakouts. We were struggling. I should back up. These were the highs up to that point, mid-March. Uh, yeah, both around mid-March. Uh, we had two reaction highs around the same level there. So this was a breakout to new highs. It failed, but the Qs held tight, powered on, and, and looked like, um, I'm sure to some, if you only trade the Qs in a vacuum, you would say, oh, that's a bullish breakout. That's impulsive. It's well above those previous reaction highs. It occurred after a little washout move there. However, this to me is a massive failure. That is a failed breakout. We're well below the uh, those previous reaction highs we broke smash down below a bearish rising wedge now anything is possible um, move on to new highs a back test of the wedge you know I, to say otherwise it just wouldn't make sense of course anything's possible we all know that however i don't see a back test of the wedge uh, typically when i see a very impulsive breakdown of a, a wedge pattern or an upside breakout um, you typically don't get back tests, just like you didn't get one here. You see that we smashed down through there impulsively. We finally had a kickback rally down here, but nowhere close to back testing the wedge, and then we had another leg down. So although anything's possible, I'm going to be on the lookout for more downside tomorrow. Um, will we get a reaction before we get to this next key support level? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It's hard to say. Um, I don't see tremendous amount of support. Sure, there's reaction highs to look at, but uh, I can just tell you this, that I'm still short the Qs. Um, you know, my bigger position's in IWM, and um, I certainly added the Qs today. And I don't, I'll be honest with you, I don't plan to cover here, but if I was a quick trader, I know some of you guys are looking to just game you know, quick, quick pullback trades. This is a pretty important support level. This I call it the should do the trick, meaning if we break it, that should do the trick to open the doors, open the door to a big wave down. And I have this critical SIA support, which is the the uh, lows from uh, Monday, March 27th, I think it is. And it's also price support. You can see a few reactions there. So there's my expectation for the Qs. And um, it all ties in again with the bigger picture. If this is just the early stages of a deeper correction, um, we're probably going to soon start to see some uh, really impulsive selling, not just one day like this, but several days of that, and maybe even, you know, and something worse than just a 0.4% close. All right, SPY, I covered a similar pattern in the SPY, and again, that video was done uh, during the, when the market was open. We were still well within the wedge. Um, shortly after publishing that, we did, the market did reverse. The SPY also impulsively smashed down through the wedge and printed a solid close blow to close not far off its lows, which is bearish. You didn't see any buyers. You saw nothing but uh, profit taking, people getting out, longs exiting, shorts piling, and whatever it was, doesn't matter. That's what it is. You can see the impulsive action breakdown. This is a well-defined uptrend line. If you zoom in, you see up until the point uh, right here, we only had one candlestick wick. Now, can, candle uh, trend line drawing is more of an art than a science, but I use the, I try to look at a trend line that has the most reactions, whether they're bodies and or shadows of a candlestick. A shadow is the tail, a little skinny thing hanging down below, or the wick, the skinny thing up above it. Uh, so when you, you know, here you're trying to capture, uh, you can see all the reactions there. So either way, that's, i trying to get to the you know, make a point that I give that trend line quite a bit of uh, validity, especially the way we smash down through it impulsively, confirm with negative divergences, yada, 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 looks good. IWM, as I told you, is still in that multi-month trading range. I talked about that quite a bit recently. That trading range goes all the way back to early December. So as bearish as the uh, reversal and the big turnaround and, you know, negative 1.3% close was on IWM, 
bigger picture, we're still within this trading range. And so that battle is not won until we have a definitive break in either direction. Uh, I still highly favor downside resolution. And as I talked about, this is like a coiled spring when you have these, these tight trading ranges, relatively tight price compression. Okay, pardon me. I had to pause it there. A dog was barking. All right. Um, right. Let's see. One thing to note on the IWM that was somewhat bearish, we had a big old bearish engulfing candlestick. We had a doji yesterday, bearish engulfing candlestick. Um, you note today was the third consecutive red candle, uh, meaning uh, this week, meaning every day this week so far we've been down. Today we're down impulsively, especially with that big turnaround. That just wipes out. That's a knife through the heart of anybody that, you know, tried to snip in and buy. Um, but again, there's a battleground. We have to take out the bottom of that range. Um, but so far it looks to me, you know, we had, you know, uh, almost a month of selling with the markets moving lower. We had a week, exactly one week, five days of green candles. So five consecutive days up and now we're already three candles down. And again, remember, this is technical analysis. You've got to think of, think of it this way. This is all supply and demand. If we continue lower and we break below this trading range, what makes this so powerful, um, one of the things that makes siding, uh, sideways trading ranges like this so powerful, if we break below it, we get down to this point right here. Just say we take out those those lows from Monday. We have wiped out every single long who bought for the last four months is now underwater. Anybody that bought within this trading range, anything IWM, if they bought IWM, bought into the small caps, a Russell 2000 fund, they're underwater. That's a lot of people. And those people are then, you know, for whatever reason, you're gonna you're gonna have people that sell. They're gonna they're gonna realize, oh, I thought this market was going to new highs. I haven't gone anywhere for four months. Now I'm losing money. Uh, there's a lot of reasons. I'm not gonna tell you why people are gonna sell, but that's how technical analysis works. Uh, so when you can get a big breakdown through this range, you have a lot of people underwater, a lot of buyers trapped uh, that want out, and um, I'm just going to open the door to move down, in my opinion, to at least this 125.66 level with a speed bump along the way there, about 130.35, and uh, meaning it'll look something like this. Boom, quick drop, a little blurp maybe, and then a continued move down to 125.66, give or take. All right, let's go over a couple index charts. I'm not going to go over uh, too many more of these uh uh, let's do the sector charts. I mean, um, I pointed out today in the trading room shortly before the close, I didn't have time to get it out. We finally had that breakdown I've been waiting forever and a day for on SMH. Uh, there it is. You can see, I mean, we did eke below it yesterday, but that's not a convincing breakdown. That's not impulsive. This is a pretty nice, and it's a second day now, um, trading below that line. So prices are starting to move down a little bit more impulsively, about a 0.6% drop in the semis. Those divergences are still intact. PPO curling down. The RSI is pointing down. A uh, little more work to be done, but that's a breakdown, folks. So be, be on guard. I may add that as an official trade idea. And uh, let's take a look at a couple of the other ones. As you know, I like to follow the all the semi-ETFs, or at least a few of them. XSD, that just tracks a different semiconductor index. I pointed this one out. Bearish rising wedge right here. These two white lines. Uh, confirm with negative divergence. You know, we had divergence back here. We did have corrections as well, but this is a bigger wedge, bigger divergence, i.e. bigger correction when it breaks. Uh, we need to see this line go here. That We need to see that's that's the lows from Monday. The That's actually Wednesday, March 22nd there. Whatever, this this line here, about 50, 58, 60 or so. Once that goes, boom, I see just a, the virtual straight drop down. I think it'll be very quick. There is a lot of hot air in the semis. And when you pop this balloon, I think we're going to go down there. So we're at about 59 now. So that'd be a, that'd be a decent trade, especially one of those leveraged um, ETFs if you're in for a quick trade, because I don't think it's going to take very long to get there. And where we go from there, it all depends. We'll, we'll see. There's a potential target down here at 50. Uh, but again, that's not my trading preferred trading proxy, so I'm more focused on the SMH XOXX. This is another one. Uh, there it goes. 
long standing. This one's a little bit above the primary uptrend line, so this one has a little more work to do, but you can see some potential targets here, and I see nothing less over time. Uh, again, these semis are just so insanely overbought and overvalued. A uh, little reaction there, 121.35 area, and at least a move down to that 113.60 area in time. So I think the correction might look something along these lines here. And let's see, next we have, on a related note, we'll do tech, XLK. There's XLK, you know, remember, the XLK is basically the NASDAQ 100 without Amazon. I mean, I'm being a bit facetious, but it's not too far off. The the, the overlap is tremendous. You know, the NASDAQ 100 uh, looks a lot like XLK with just a consumer discretionary kicker in there, and the biggest part of that is uh, Amazon. Uh, so obviously the two are going to marry each other almost in the charts, but you can see divergent high and even more steep divergence even most recently. See down here when we had that extreme overbought reading, we had it on the uh, XLK just like we did on on QQQ, that was about 82, uh, a never seen before reading on the daily RSI, so overbought. It's amazing that prices have, have held up this long. Uh, 52.55, still my flash point. Need to see that level get taken out. That's a pretty key support level. Defines this whole recent trading range here. The wedge broke down. Uh, this one's defying gravity, um, but uh, eventually I think it'll succumb to it, and um, that one will probably be a quick, also a quick ride down to that T1 level. Now keep in mind, I have this, this trend line here, this potential. I should call it a potential trend line. That's why I have it toned down a bit in color. There's one, two, there's three reactions that validates it. And it also comes in right where T1 does if we get what I expect, a quick drop when this 52.55 level goes. So reaction there. And um, we'll have to respect this trend line after that. Uh, so that's just one we'll have to watch. Um, Let's look at X, uh, the uh, ETF that I used as a, an official short trade for you guys in it. This is the daily chart. Now, I usually won't chart leveraged ETFs. I'll use the one-time invert, I'm sorry, the one-time non-leveraged um, version or the actual index itself because the three-time leveraged ETFs are prone to decay. However, you don't get that price decay uh, as much. Uh, if at all, during a fairly unidirectional trend. So we're looking at the bearish technology ETF. So this is just XLK in reverse with 300% leverage. Because the trend uh, recently was very strong in the in the tech sector, uh, we can use a downtrend line that also fits well with this one. This is where you chop around. This is where you get the decay periods like this, sideways, up, down, up, down, up, down, or in these ranges. Uh, but this is fine. So if we get what I expect, you can see here the strong divergence, bullish divergence there, especially recently. Um, we get a quick move up. Probably looks something like this. Hold on, let me see if I had... Yes, I do. I'm going to give you a better view here. Here we go. Two-hour chart. One 20-minute candle. There it is. There's your downtrend line. So here's the story. We had a uh, bullish divergence here. You can see price is just making about an equal or slightly lower low. So this is negative divergence one right here at this point. Negative divergence two right here at this point. And there's a... I should clarify. Since this is a bearish ETF, this is positive for bullish divergence. Everything's backwards here, guys. Bear with me. I'm sorry about that. Uh, there's your downtrend line. Um, pretty well defined. We had one little pop above it right here. But other than that, I see a lot of reactions. So this is what I'm expecting. It's, and I'm doing this if you're a short-term trader and you're in this trade and you just want to take a quick buck. I expect a pop up here. I think that's resistance there. I, I do see resistance, whether or not it holds, or we slice through it, blast through it, anything's possible. Especially if, you know, this whole powder keg gets lit soon. 1360-ish, uh, I have it at 1359, maybe a little pullback there. Then we power through, and it's pretty thin all the way up to about 1512, meaning there's not a lot here on the volume of price histogram. Not a lot of trades occurred at that point. So I expect a relatively swift move up there. Uh, to try to quantify it for you, this is a three-time leverage ETF. So you would you would get a, you know, just from where we closed today, not counting the 1% gain, that's about a 4% pop to that 1360 level. And if we continue on up to 1512, that's about a, almost a 16% gain from current levels. So not, not bad if that plays out like that. 
Uh, let's talk biotechs real quick. XBI I pointed out a breakdown the other day. A couple others in the trading room are also tracking this one uh, and, and short the biotechs. Here is a breakdown. This is a daily chart. The bigger picture has a symmetrical triangle here in yellow uh, defined by this line and this line breakout. And then more importantly, we had this tr uptrend line recently and uh, you know, we also had divergent high on that. Let's, let's, we can see that better on a two hour period chart. Yeah, this is the trend line I talked about. So I, I pointed out the breakdown the other day. We broke down, we back tested, and I had I put in this little line. This was a little support shelf that gave way. The, so we had a breakdown, successful back test, and prices roll over, and they almost hit that. I have a support zone here. I've had this line created back on uh, November 16th, updated December 16th. So this, this trend line's been here for months. I'm sorry, support line. That's what we hit today and bounced a little bit before the close. So that's a support zone if that one goes, which I expect it will over time. Maybe a little reaction first and we come down here next support zone. Um, let's move on to another biotech ETF just to kind of reaffirm what I'm seeing in the sector. This is IBB. IBB is the NASDAQ, NASDAQ biotech ETF. So you'll have a lot of overlap, but these are only biotech companies that are only listed on the NASDAQ, uh, components of the NASDAQ. And a little bit a little bit of work to do before that trend line's taken out. If we look at the daily chart, uh, it looks like a rising wedge here. We only have a little bit of con divergence. We do have some confirmed at the most recent high, some small divergences. Either way, look for a break of this trend line. What I like about it is that if we do get that break, it's dual support. We have both uptrend line support as well as this horizontal line. You can see a lot of reactions, you know, when you go to the left. Reactions from above, reactions from below, and on and on and on and on I can go. So that, that would be a, a pretty pretty significant technical event if we break down below there. And I don't see anything really stopping IBB if that level goes with a conviction down here to that is... 268.20 and to quantify it for you, clean board 268.20, measure it out 268.40, close enough, about a six and a half, seven percent drop. All right, moving on, and then we'll wrap it up. Volatility, real quick. VIX, here's the VIX, talked about this quite a bit, divergent low, we had a pop, a rally, remember when the VIX goes up, that's because volatility is spiking, that means typically or almost always the market's selling off, and uh, we had this divergent low recently, volatility has been gradually increasing, we're at the low end of our range, if I jump back, that was a two-year daily chart, this is a, a 10-year weekly chart, and um, as I pointed out in the past, the ranges over time change. Uh, back uh, up until about 2012, this box showed represented the low end of the trading range, and that's where you wanted to get long volatility or you wanted to buy puts if you were expecting a correction. You don't want to buy puts or calls when volatility is high because there's a lot of implied volatility or volatility premium in the puts, and you're paying a lot for them. Uh, when they comes down here, puts are cheap. So if you can align breakouts or I should say more accurately break down sell signals in the market when the VIX is at the low end of its range. Um, again, if you don't know, if you're not very, if it, in fact, if I'm telling you this and you don't already know it, you, you shouldn't be trading options if you don't already know all this stuff. Uh, but that's uh, just something I want to point out. Stay away from options if you're new to trading or at least read up everything you can about them. And, and, and um, yeah, that's, I'm just going to leave it at that. So here's those low end of the ranges. And, and the point being, you don't stay there long when you hit the low end of the range. Every now and then you have these big spikes down through there. And those are usually po followed by, uh, or no, always have been, some of the biggest you know spikes in volatility that we've had. And now you can see where we hit the lowest point, came down here to the lowest point in, in, in decades, if not ever. You know, this goes back 10 years. I can't go any further back on this particular time uh, chart on this time frame, but uh, that's that. So there it is, volatility at or near, coming off historic lows, VXN volatility e ETF. This is just the NASDAQ volatility index. And you can see that this was the low end of the range before these two lines, and still is, but you've had just in the past decade, 
only two spikes right here and right here just recently and as you can see you know that that marked low in the volatility index or the VXN I should say followed by a pretty sharp move up that was undoubtedly a little correction in the market a little blurp one pull back and then a big spike up um, and most other pullbacks anywhere to uh, this range you can see where uh, that's where the VIX usually explodes sometimes it can stay there for a little while um, but usually once it visits that level it starts moving higher this is an extreme level and um, I, I don't expect us to stay here much longer. In fact, we're still only right now, despite the 8 plus percent gain today in the VXN, uh, we're only at the top end of the low end of the or top end of the bottom of the range, I should say. Uh, this is, again, the bottom of the range here. So, you know, we could see, you know, an explosive move in volatility in the, in the coming days or weeks. And... Um, no, I can't give you a target right now. I don't have one on this chart, but uh, just just point being that here's a daily chart, bullish divergence, falling wedge, breakout back test on the VXN. This is resistance, so we need to pop above that level. If you're a volatility trader and you just happen to trade the the VXN, there's your first target right there. I see somewhere around 1734, maybe up to this 1863 area, and if things get really ugly. Um, and I could see this happen in a flash with the right conditions. That's 2366. Uh, take that out. Things are going to be real ugly and you don't want to be long. All right. Uh, we'll wrap it up here. I'll try to get this out as soon as possible. Maybe follow up with some static charts. This has been Randy Finney with the right side of the chart. I hope you enjoyed it.